Have you ever wondered or asked yourself, what's my purpose in life? Over six immersive days at Date With Destiny, Tony Robbins can help you find that answer, providing you tools to reshape your destiny and design the life of your dreams. Date With Destiny is Tony's favorite event, and it's the one you might have seen in that Netflix documentary, I Am Not Your Guru. Here's what happens though over those six days. You start out by gaining a deep understanding of what truly motivates you. Then you identify the triggers that create pain and pleasure in your life and learn the strategies to eliminate pain for good. Finally, you'll learn how to ignite or reignite your passion to achieve your ultimate vision of your life, career, finances, health, and relationships. As Tony says, it is in your moments of decision that your destiny is shaped. This is your chance to make the ultimate breakthrough and to start living the life you desire and deserve. To learn more about Date With Destiny, visit www.tonyrobbins.com forward slash destiny. We all encounter challenges in our relationships, some more serious than others, but it's how we handle them that ultimately matters. For many of us, when we feel pain, we tend to blame our partners. We criticize, we close up, we avoid them, even ignore them all to play a game of who's wrong and who's right. But when you truly love someone, it doesn't matter who's wrong or who's right. In fact, blame only takes our power away, and excuses only cause us to continue to hurt each other. Hey guys, it's Annie York, Editorial Director for RRI. Welcome back to the Tony Robbins Podcast. On today's episode of the Real Breakthrough series, we're taking you back to date with Destiny, where Tony is working with Teresa and John, a couple fighting their way out of a painful past, and trying to figure out a path toward a healthier, happier future. While Teresa and John have made substantial progress since dealing with infidelity, they still struggle when it comes to constructive communication. They're slipping back into old ways and making excuses for their behavior, shirking responsibility for their actions. But it's clear they're still deeply in love and they're committed to finding a better way. What Tony does is help them see that if you're having problems in your relationship and feeling pain, It's because you're focused on yourself, not your partner. He helps them see that you cannot continue to focus on what you're not getting and what your partner's not giving you. Because if you want to build an extraordinary relationship, you need to tear up the rules and start holding yourself 100% accountable for your experience. So I just, I like you have a pre-Sage and post-Sage. I have a pre-Tony and post-Tony world. Okay. Thank you for that. This Tony or a different Tony? No, you. Oh, okay. Um, Thanks for that. And so my story is um, in my pre-Tony world, um, sometimes I was unseen and not understood. And um, in the unsafe specifically, and I just wanted to share because I think it's so unconscious, um, was not feeling protected um, Mm. in moments of, you know, uh, the story was you know, I was at a dog park and I got in a fight with another dog owner. And the next time going, I wanted him to come with me. Yes. And I had to ask. I mean, God forbid, right? But I had to ask. (laughs) Wait, I'm a little confused. And he can't... (laughs) How would he know that you needed him to come with you if you didn't ask him? Well, because I had to go again. I understand, but how would he know that? He didn't. Yeah, that's right. And then you were mad. I, you know, I wasn't mad. Oh, were we hurt? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, gentlemen, you didn't realize that you were supposed to be Sherlock Holmes. You yeah. That you're a full-time detective, that you're supposed to do this. But ladies, do you want a detective, yes or no? Yeah. Yes, because what girls do is they leave little hints of things. So a girl that cares will hear that hint and go, tell me more. But the guy just goes, okay, I understand, and moves on. Because what's he looking to do? Take every problem, make it small, and get rid of it so we can move on to beautiful stuff, and she's wanting to make it much bigger and show that you love me by feeling for me and my fear and then walking me there, which I bet he would have done. If she would have said, honey, you know, I don't know if you remember, but I went to that dog park and I had kind of an altercation, which by the way, his mind is, it's not an altercation. You're not cut, you're not beat up. You probably just had a, you know, you said something to each other, which in a guy's world, saying something doesn't mean right? It takes really, really intense words for a guy to think it's really an issue. 
And by the way, once it's done and nothing happens, it's over. So what was it? Did you guys have a fist fight? Did she stab you? What did she do? It was Just a guy. So no, it was a guy. It was a guy. And what did he do? He yelled at me a lot. A lot? Yeah. Okay, what if he yelled at you? What did he yell at you? Well, Why did he yell at you? Because my dog was humping his dog. Now, so technically it's not your fault. <laughs> but it is your responsibility because it's your dog. In my business, I had a time in my business where it looked like companies going bankrupt and everybody told me how to go bankrupt and it was not my fault. I didn't make any of those decisions to do it, but it's my company. So who's responsible still? I am, 100%. So I couldn't go bankrupt because I couldn't do that to someone else because I don't want that done to me. So I just want you to see this is... She's being very sincere, and I hope you feel not attacked because I'm not coming from that place. I want you, me, all of us to see the insanity of our rules. And on the feminine side, there are hidden rules that the guy's supposed to know. And if you have to tell him, he gets no points. <laughs> right? Look at that. Can you, even for a moment, see how insane that is? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> but you still want to do it. Yeah. Just to finish the story as quickly as possible, if that's possible. <laughs> he got upset with you and said what? That I had no control over my dog. Said what? I, that I had no control over my, my dog. Isn't that true? Well, yeah. But, <laughs> but what does that matter? Are you serious? What? He, it's not him yelling at me. He wasn't yelling at me. A guy at the dog park was yelling at me. But it wouldn't, if a guy or a woman or anyone, you were responsible for your dog and his dog, your dog is humping it. But that's not, I was talking about asking my husband to come with me the next time because I felt scared. No, I understand that, but I'm trying to understand what he would be understanding out of your story. I'm just trying to put myself in his shoes and I'm a little confused. This is the nail, right? I'm confused! <laughs> You didn't have control of your dog. What he shouted was true. He, well, he didn't have control over his dog either. <laughs> his dog was being f***ed in the ass. Your dog was not. <laughs> but she just sat there. <laughs> oh, she should have run away, the little b <laughs> But he, he yelled at something to you. And when he yelled, what do you mean he yelled? He got in my face and started screaming at me. Did he scream or did he talk loudly? I mean, enough that another, a friend of mine came over and was in the middle of the altercation. I mean, it, it was, it was, it was, it was. Altercation? I don't, okay, fine, fight. I don't know, yell. <laughs> Whatever. No, but, but I, <laughs> each of these words, do they increase the emotional intensity or reduce it? She's taken, here's what happened. She didn't have control of her dog. Maybe this guy didn't have control of theirs. They both f***ed up. Her dog humped the other dog. He was really upset because he doesn't want her dog's puppies. <laughs> and he looked at her and said, what the f*** are you doing? Or something of that nature, which is certainly uncouth and I don't support it in any way. And said, you don't have control of your dog. Did he do it that loud? Yes. Are you sure? Yeah, the whole park heard it. The whole park heard it. <laughs> How big was the park? This size? <laughs> It's, it's a baseball field. Yes, and how do you know the whole park heard it? Because I really want to know how you know that. By the way, how many arguable statements has she made since she stood up? Every one of them's arguable. Every single one of them. She could have caught up and said, you know, I went here and, you know, our dog was there and they got all shaded and this man came up, he was really upset. And the sensations I felt was I felt tension, I felt caught in my throat, I felt scared. And, you know, I know I, I, know I up. I've tried to make control the dog, and I think he did too. But you know, I really was really uncomfortable. And what I really want is, if I go back there, I, I don't want to feel unsafe. Would you come with me? Would he have shown up? Yes or no? Yes. In a heartbeat. Is that him right there? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot more to this. I'm uh, sure there is. No, but I mean, this wasn't. This was her not feeling seen for 20 years. So it what wasn't. Can you be responsible. Oh.
Thank you for that. That's very, very beautiful. So she, she did come and say, this altercation occurred and, you know, I didn't feel safe. Yes. Would you go to the park with me the well, next she time? I, she did. Okay. Yeah, and what did she say? did. I, I can't remember. I, I, I didn't think it was a big deal, to be honest. Yes. Like, I didn't, you know, I wasn't there and I should have gone to the park with okay, her. Okay, that's fair. Absolutely. Great. So she did ask you then? She did. Got it. But what I did predict is he didn't really see it as a serious threat. If he was a serious threat, would you have escorted her there? Yes. Yes. He heard it and thought what? Be honest with me. You thought? I thought, you know, people get angry. You had many other people around you, and I know you wanted me to be there to protect you, but I wasn't. And I don't think that's going to happen again at the dog park. Like, I didn't, you know, I didn't think, but I, but I should have... I should have been more attentive to the fact that That's she beautiful. felt unsafe. That's beautiful. By the way, give a hand for that 100%. Now, for this relationship to work, that's not enough. Because she doesn't own her part. It takes two to tango. Is it true? She hasn't owned it at all. She could have said, you know what? I probably made a lot of claims. By the way, if you listen to the way he described it, and you got to tell me if I'm wrong on this, because you said something, John, and maybe I took it out of context, maybe yeah. not. Did you feel, when she told you about it, attacked for not being there when it happened? Yes. Yes. But wait, wait, I want you to stop okay. that. That's why he didn't go. Raise your hand if you follow this, ladies. Gentlemen, raise your hand if you know what I'm talking about. This is a series of her being unseen and him feeling criticized. It's both sides. I can't let this go. I'm really grateful you stood up. I honor you as a man for standing up. But this relationship will not work if it's just one person doing it. He's got a group of his that have done the same list. We go to the other side, I guarantee. Am I wrong? Criticism, closing. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot to that, yes, right? There's a, there's a big story for that. Yes. Um, but I don't want you guys to go to story. Yeah. I want you guys to clear this up for each other. Yeah. But I want to want you to get is she's still hanging on to that story, but she hasn't owned her responsibility in it, which is why it's still f***ed up in her. You've had, your story was all about what other people did and didn't do. There was nothing about you in that story. There was no, I don't want you to defend her right now because I'm really trying to help you both. And I'm grateful for you to defend her and I want you to do any of the case, but this is one case where she's got to hear this because this ain't going to work otherwise long term. Can you see how you made everybody else responsible and you took no responsibility for any of this? Like, could you have communicated in a better way that made him want to come to be with you? Yes. Did definitely. you communicate in a way that made him feel criticized, if you look back on it now? Yes. You criticized him for not being there in the first place. So why the f*** would I go, especially when it wasn't that big a f***ing deal in the first place, and you're going to be pissed no matter what anyway. And I got the shit I got to do. Yes. Can you see that? Yes. Good. Because I think you're both beautiful. I want you both to win, but you can't win if only one plays this game. Or you can win for a while. He can become your pleaser, mm -mm. but there only, there'll be a point in time where that won't make you happy either. It'll make you angry. No, we, Like we're... you saw last night with this young lady up here on the one knee. Yes. Think about it. What was that all about? He didn't support me because he didn't agree with what I did with a doctor and he knew the truth about her father not taking her in the first place. He didn't comply and affirm her when she's being wrong and unfair and unjust and crazy. And then she's not going to forgive him for that ever. This kind of absurd rules are where all relationships are destroyed. You must take, we all have to take 100% responsibility for our experience. Anything else? It's just the blame game, and who gets hurt in the blame game? You're hurting because you don't feel heard, understood, seen. He's hurting because he's feeling criticized, closed. You're not, there's no relationship here whatsoever, and yet I love this crazy woman. He's nodding his head, by the way. <laughs> and you love this crazy man. Yes. So perhaps there's more drama than you need, and perhaps even if you feel the drama, then feel it authentically and deliver it through so. But the so can't be a blame or it's not so. You're taking it out of your head where it would be blame. You're bringing it to your own body, which is authentic and unarguable, sensation, sensation, the feeling I have, and then what I want. But the want is not from making him wrong. If you're not making him wrong, I could be wrong. 
Maybe he's an But my bet is, if you're not making him wrong and you say, honey, this would really be meaningful for me, are you going to do it? Absolutely. Did you think it was going to be that meaningful? Uh, No, I didn't. I didn't think it would be. I I mean, there's a lot more reasons why it was so important that I went. Yeah, it was was stacked, but it was was because there had been so many years that she had not been seen and... She was substitute. I mean, there's. I mean, she got the dog because I wasn't seeing her in the first place. Sure. So that had meaning for her, and she didn't. She didn't feel like I was being her man in many other parts of of life. And so this story is representative of, of those other things. I really honor you for taking that responsibility. That kind of responsibility will be able to, to transform your woman. I, I see you doing that. Pardon me. It has. That's beautiful. And to be fair to her, yes. she has grown a lot, and this. She's somewhat projecting the way she used to feel compared, and I know she's using the language now in the moment that's representative of that. Yes. But, I mean, we, we had a magical time at Date with Destiny last year. Yes. And on uh, relationship night, I wrote her a letter telling her I, I cheated on her two years before. Yes. And this was before that, that incident at the park. And so she knew that there was something wrong. Yes, even Even if you know what she could feel in some Yeah, yeah. I mean, we both knew there was something wrong. Yes. Right? So that's all the more reason why, first of all, thank you for that. Yeah. All the more reason for your benefit to be able to take these sensations and feelings that are making you crazy and communicate in a way where you could be understood, where you can be supported, where he can give you, be see you, can't be done when he's being criticized either. Right. It's cancer. It's just like unseen for you and not understood for you. If you can connect those two, because here's two people that totally love each other, but what's happened? He didn't leave and have an affair because he doesn't love her, or he wouldn't be here right now. He did it because he felt he couldn't win, and so he went someplace where he could feel alive for a few moments and not criticized. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, absolutely. Totally accepted as he was in every single way. And I had shut him out. What's that? I had shut him out. You would shut him out? Yes, I had. And that's beautiful to see. I'm not blaming you, Teresa, in any way. I'm your fan. I think you know. I just want to make sure for all of us here, we don't leave here with these excuses anymore. Because all the excuses do is hurt each other. And if you're going to do that, the thing's going to end eventually anyway. Or if it doesn't, you're going to be miserable the rest of your life with somebody else and trying to fill up with your kids or your work or you know, girlfriends or shopping or sports or somebody else in the worst case. Right? Or a dog. Or a dog. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> a horny dog. <laughs> <laughs> Guys like, just fix the... That's how the guy would look at it. <laughs> right. I just got one more, one, one more thing to say is um, Teresa gave me back her ring when uh, we were at Date with Destiny. And uh, it's, it's just so important for me for her to have it because I'm not who I used to be. You're not what? I'm not who I used to be. And... I'm so committed to her. I didn't know what I had for 20 years. And I would do whatever I could for her for the rest of her life to win her back and to give her this ring. And if she doesn't want to take it now, that's okay. The Tony Robbins Podcast is directed and hosted by Tony Robbins. Annie York is our editorial director and occasional host. Our executive producer is Carrie Song. Jamie Carvajal and Adriel De La Torre are our digital editors. Special thanks to Mary Buckheit and Diane Adcock for their creative review.